you know, yesterday here, I managed to grab hold of the Labour MP, not physically, just, um, you know, metaphorically, uh, the Labour MP for Ealing and Acton, Rupa Hook, and I asked her, what should we get up to? Yeah, I've had um, quite a longish day. It's a strange sort of subculture ecosystem you enter in the Labour Party conference. There are long days. They start with breakfast meetings, first thing. Uh, then there are sort of lunch fringe events. And there's even, if you fancied it, dinners in the evening if you're an MP. We, this is kind of people trying to impress you. They think you're a person to be lobbied, to wine and dine you. I, I didn't go to any dinners yesterday night, I have to say. But anyway, um, there's as well as the stuff you see in the hall, there's loads of fringe meetings. So I seem to have done back-to-back fringe meetings. What are these fringe meetings about and why are they important? So they're often kind of discussing detail of policy and what Labour should be doing. And it's an exciting time because, you know, hopefully we're getting close to going back into government for the first time in 12 years. Does it feel like that? Does it feel like that, that it, it's closer than it has been for quite a long time? I mean, look, I, I don't want to jinx it and I don't want to be complacent. For too many times in my life I've seen it looks like we're getting close. The election I was elected in 2015, Ed Miliband was meant to have won. It didn't happen. But the polls are good, the indications are good. When I speak to people over the weekend after the Cami quasi budget, um, people are saying, what's happened with the government? They've lost the plot. They've gone completely bonkers. I'm hoping people will see through this so-called new Prime Minister who's saying she's been in two weeks when we know it's 12 years and that their time, I think just any government that's been in too long gets complacent and uh, I'm hoping this is the beginning of the end for them. Still though with these fringe meetings you had um, I suppose they're, they're the opportunity to have discussions about things that aren't so comfortable and I know one of the things that was brought up was the image of Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party do you think that is improving in terms of relatability? Yeah, look, I think the more people get to see him, the more they'll like him. I mean, at the beginning, he was a bit hamstrung by the fact we had COVID and there was a sort of situation where we were agreeing, the Labour Party was agreeing with everything the government did. Because, and I remember saying in internal meetings, when are the gloves going to come off? Our Labour Party members like a bit of opposition rather than total agreement with the government. But Apparently, in a national crisis, people want your government to succeed and rather than sort of people at each other's throats. So, and then there was Ukraine, which again, everyone was agreed on that, that we have to clobber Putin. Uh, Whereas now, I mean, with things like Partygate, I think he's coming into his own, obviously that's sort of gone now, but with this budget, the crazy policy positions they're coming up with that are a complete repudiation of all the 12 years before. I'm hoping that, the, I mean, because the perceptions were he's a bit boring and a bit safe, which kind of worked well against Johnson, who was a bit too exciting and colourful. We, we don't know how many children he has, do we? Um, I'm hoping that those will shift as people get to know him and like him. Um, so that was a fringe meeting on perceptions in marginal seats I went to. They had some polling. They, they also showed that um, Liz Truss, nobody knows anything about her. She's been there 12 years, but she's not really left any footprints apart from the pork markets and the cheese um but yeah i've been to all sorts of fringe meetings the one i did the breakfast one was on about race and ethnicity and what policies labor needs to have on those matters where's it missing out on i mean i personally think there was a lot of discussion on the union jack actually and should that be reclaimed as a symbol for all or is it a symbol of racism and intolerance and colonialism it was really interesting i mean i think we're in danger of going too much down an anti-woke route sometimes. Um, yeah, the leadership contest had actually a lot of brown people in it, which was great. But if they're all arguing against multiculturalism and all the gains that we've made, I think that's a worry personally. So how's Labour going to plant its feet and have a, a solid standpoint on that? Because the whole anti-woke argument is born out of people being frustrated about being too politically correct to some extent. Um, And Labour, I think it's a fair uh, accusation for want of a better word, hasn't really come out solidly footed on these particular arguments. How is it going to do that? You said it's time for the gloves to be off. I mean, we we need to get the balance right. We need to show we are patriotic. And the whole thing started yesterday with the singing of the national anthem, which is quite unusual. Um, But we need to show that we are, we need to show we're on people's side. It's going to be tough times ahead. Everything is doubling, tripling, quadrupling in the shops. You know, to fill up your car with a tank of petrol, all those things are 
astronomical prices now. We need to show we're on people's side. I mean, arguments about statues and flags sometimes kind of miss the point when, I don't know, people's everyday life is not great. Um, and we need to show that the fact that they've uncapped bankers' bonuses, the fact if you're a millionaire, you get, what was it, 55000 That's more than most people's salary in a year. The extra bong all these people have had. I think we need to demonstrate that. So that was Rupert Hook, who's the Labour MP for Ealing and Acton, talking to me here at the Labour conference.